They have a religious agenda, they will die for their cause. They will blow up some stuff. You know, I mean, during the Christian crusade, even though it was whack and that was not pure form of Christianity, they died for their cause. Many people jump into action because they believe. If you say, I believe in Jesus Christ, you should make some action. Something should happen. You shouldn't just be posted up talking about my faith to carry me over. Why? Because look what else happens about faith or believing. All right, it says, a reward of them that diligently seek him. Mark 11 and 6. He that believeth not shall be damned. Okay, so people right now who do not believe in Jesus Christ, and this is where it gets tough as a Christian, because see, a lot of people will embrace the good fundamentals of Christianity. God is love. Jesus preached good things. Love your neighbor and all that stuff. Now when it starts getting into the stuff where he that believeth not shall be damned, now it's like, I don't like Christianity because they're dogmatic. They're too narrow-minded. They're too conservative and things like that. We cannot deny what the Bible says. Either you're going to be a Christian and embrace the whole Bible, or you're going to say, I don't want a part of it. Many times we have to defend this with Christians, and they will end up in a horrible situation. So here it is. He that believes not shall be damned. James 2 and 19 and 20. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. Now, this goes back up to what I was talking about earlier. By grace are you saved through faith. If we just ride in on just that scripture without cross-referencing, look at this down here. The Bible says that the devils also believe. Are devils saved? Are demons saved? Absolutely not. In fact, demons believe probably more than many of us. Why? Because they've seen him. They was kicked out of heaven. They know he's real. They know their ending is about to come. But human beings sometimes waver in our faith. So we can't just say, I believe. You could go up to a wino. Dude sitting on the corner talking, I believe in the Lord. You go up to a prostitute, and she have a, a, a cross on, and ask you, hey, what you doing tonight, big boy? <laughs> Girl, you know you need to come off the streets and get saved. Oh, don't tell me, because I believe in Jesus. I got a relationship with the Lord. And so on and so forth. <laughs> now, I ain't going to judge it, but if you tell me it's an orange tree and I'm seeing apples, <laughs> I'm like, no, it looks like apples to me. <laughs> so, my point is this. Just because people say, I believe, how many of those rappers get up there and talk about all kind of y'all can all kiss for stuff and all y'all can go and kiss that and all y'all hate all the good cat and that brother and get done and say, I want to thank the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for allowing me to do this and all that. I believe in the Lord. <laughs> all of that. Doing all that jazz. I believe in the Lord. Alright, so just because people talk about I believe in Jesus, that necessarily doesn't make them see. Yeah. All right, so let's go. Let's continue. Let's build upon it. Now, we talked about grace, right? One element. The next one is what? Faith. Let's jump on down to this. Confession. Nobody wants to do this one, right? Yeah. How about this? Confession. Definition of confession. It is to disclose sin or faults to who? God. Not to your friends. All right? I know y'all think y'all got some close friends, but everybody cannot handle your dirty laundry. I'm going to keep it real with you. Girls, you know what I did. For real? I'm going to pray for you. <laughs> Guess what? Uh -uh. Everybody cannot handle your filth. I can't. I can't. You know, human beings, you nobody really tells their friends, family, loved ones what's going on in their heart. You don't really tell them your worst thoughts and, and, and secrets and stuff like that. You always hold back a little something, something. Because you know that a human being's opinion of you will change if you really told him what you was about. So the bottom line is only God can handle that. You can break it down to him and say, hey man, I am this and that and this. And I'm dealing with this. And he'll say, I can work with you. Where you at? A human being can only go so far. So God, we confess to him. It is to unburden the conscience. When you get something off your conscience, you feel great. When you unload what you've been about to the Lord, you feel great. When that burden is lifted off of you, you feel clean. You're like, man, I finally got that off my chest. I finally got that out of my head. I finally have it off of my conscience. So, to acknowledge guilt, wrongdoing, or sinfulness. Confession. You're saying, Lord, I got problems. Even if it's not as bad as some other people. People do not confess because they think they're touched better than somebody else. Because they don't do some of the more open dirt. When I was growing up at my university, I was a full-blown heathen. Everybody knew it. It wasn't no secret. I loved heathenism. I'd come up in the scene, they'd be like, this is heathen. 
And they love Cain because people like dirt. Why did they like pointing the finger at the heathen? Because it didn't make them feel like a heathen. They would say, at least I'm not as bad as Cain. And when I got saved and start talking to some of the people who pointed the finger at me, telling them they need to get saved, they start saying, well, I ain't as bad as you was. You know, <laughs> you used to do this. And just because I do a little bit of that, ah, God ain't going to judge me for that. Let me tell you something. If you're doing a small sin and somebody's doing a whole bunch of big sins, I guarantee you, you'll end up in the same place as the other person. That's right. That's Wonder, right. like, this brother robbed seven banks. I took a penny. <laughs> Surely I got a different section in hell than the bank robber. You know? I mean, give me the one with the air conditioning room. I don't know. So the bottom line is this. All right, it is to acknowledge guilt, wrongdoing, or sinfulness. The world don't want to confess. The world thinks that their poop don't smell. I hate to say this. Can you imagine going to the politicians and, and the rulers of this world talking about you need to repent and confess your sins? Hey, let me get out of my face. You know who I am? Have him killed. Immediately. <laughs> Can you imagine going to Oprah talking about confess your sins? You know, Oprah is powerful. She might be like, sure, I, I can snap your lips. How about that? I'm Oprah. You ain't always hitting it like that, did you? So, the bottom line is Oprah and all of other people have a problem with this. When you get so high up, you think, I ain't got to confess this. I've arrived. I'm not that bad. Many people will go to hell thinking, I'm a nice person. I never had to confess my sins because I'm a good person. In my heart, I feel really good because I do more good than evil. It doesn't work like that. So here we have it. It is to admit to unbecoming deeds. Romans 10 and 10. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Someone say confession is good for the soul. All right, so with your mouth, not with your eyes blinking. Yes, not with your hands up like this. Yes, it can be done like that. But it is with the mouth. It is an open confession Amen. of which you've been about to the Lord. Not in your heart. <laughs> no. Why? Why not? Because when Adam and Eve sinned, the voice of God came walking through the garden and said, Adam, where are you? Good. He knew where Adam was at. He's God. What he wanted is for Adam and Eve to come out and say, this is where I am and this is what I've been doing. They never confessed. They never opened their mouths. They kept it on the down low. They misdirected blame. When he said, what did you do? How did you know you butt naked? He said, I know it because of, you know, he said, well, how did you know? He said, because I'm naked. He said, what did you do? You eat the fruit? He said, yeah, I did. But it's because of this woman that you sent me. And he looks at Eve and says, is that true? And she says, yeah, but it was because of the serpent who deceived me. Nobody said it's because I wanted to know about it. Yeah. I wanted to investigate it. The fruit looked good. It was tasty. No, nobody says that. <laughs> you know, nobody just keeps it real no more. It's always, and you know who sets us up with that society? Yeah. Psychologists. That's right. You go in there, they won't tell you you're crazy. If I was a psychologist, the session would last about 30 seconds. You were coming there talking about, I was thinking about killing some folk, and then I got these in the Phillies, and mommy and daddy, then you should be repent and get saved. Oh, that's $500. <laughs> 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 they had to the lady on the way out. Never! <laughs> <laughs> so they come in before you, what's your problem? I was in repent and get saved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my sessions will last quick. And you know what? What they do, they get you on this couch, and they start counseling you, and you're telling them about all these troubles and hang-ups and problems and behaviors, and they say, well, it's not your fault. They'll say, you know, everyone goes through this, and you're not a bad person, you know, it's not, and all of that stuff, and it makes you feel good. It makes you feel good about your life. But what God wants you to say, if you really want to feel good, confess it to me. Amen. Let me deal with it. Without a confession, there's no healing. That's right. Unless you realize you got an open wound that is pussy, it ain't going to get healed. You're talking about it'll be all right, I'm going to rub some dirt on <laughs> No, you got to go to the doctor at some point and say, I got a problem, doc. Can you look at this? Men got a hard time with this. I will mess around and lose all my extremities before I go to the hospital. <laughs> Arm just dangling off. My wife, hey, don't shoot you. Go get that checked out. It'll be all right. You know, just messing around. No one, I should just confess that the arm ain't right. My shoulder ain't been right for like six years. I need to go to the hospital and get it checked out. But I, in my mind, I'm thinking, it's going to get better. <laughs> it won't get better. You must confess, I have a problem. Can you take a look at this? That is what confession is about. And it must be done with the mouth. I can't go into the doctor and he says, what's wrong with you? And I go, I gotta say, my shoulder hurts. You see how that works? Open your mouth unto the Lord. Right. Lord, 